Hey guys, before I get started on this video, just wanted to take a moment to say, go down and click the subscribe button. And uh, if you click the subscribe button, then you'll be notified whenever we have updates to videos that we post in our um, Ham Radio Deluxe YouTube channel to keep up to date on the changes that we're making here. And um, <clears throat> give us a thumbs up if you like the feature, if you like the video, and we'll try to keep improving things for you. Hey, greetings everyone. This is Mike, Whiskey Alpha 9, Papa India Echo, or VK4EIE from Ham Radio Deluxe. I'm just going to take a few minutes just to show you the new bulk call sign lookup feature available in the December 2020 release of Ham Radio Deluxe. What you would want to do here is make sure, and I'm not going to go through all of the setup of uh, call sign lookup, but um, you have to have it set up with some choices here. And um, you'll find that set up in the manual that's online if you want to go through that, if you haven't done so already. But um, just to focus specifically on the call sign lookup or the bulk call sign lookup function, you first have to select some QSOs. You could, you could uh, hold down the control key and just click some of them. You could uh, you know, hold down the shift key and collect a, a few of them. You can hold down control and hit A and select all of them. I recommend that you don't start by selecting all of the QSOs in your log. I've only got 13 in this log that I'm going to do this demo with, but um, if you select all the QSOs in your log and you've got thousands of them, it's going to take you a while. I recommend you start by doing a bundle of them so you can see what the results are. But I'm going to open up this first uh, QSO here just so we can look at what's in there. And you can see there's really not much information here. We don't have their name, no location information, nothing in the contact fields. So um, we've got basically call sign and continent and WPX, and that's it. So let's do the lookup on all these guys. So to do that, I've selected them. I'm going to right click, come down to lookup, call sign lookup. And it's going to ask me if I want to back up my log. I highly recommend it. Um, it just takes a moment, and uh, you'll you'll be glad you did if you ended up with a result you didn't like. So I'm going to let the backup run. Then you get some choices about whether or not you want to look up only the empty fields, or if you want to look up all fields or replace all fields. Um, need to give some thought to how you want to handle this. Uh, the only empty fields is generally the one that I select. Uh, I've already entered some stuff from the QSO, and I, you know, it's only going to uh, fill the empty fields that, um, you know, that didn't have data in them when you added the QSO in there. If you select all fields, it'll it'll replace all the uh, location and and fields that you would normally find in QRZ.com. So, it's not going to replace you know, the frequency and mode or anything like that. It's only going to replace the, the information that you would normally find in the um, in the uh, QRZ or, you know, ham call data. So just because I've only got 13 records here, I'm going to select all fields. And when I do, you're going to see over here on the right-hand side that this, um, this pane right here, this little, you know, area right here is going to show me the status of the lookup. And when it begins it'll it'll be it'll run a green line across here and that will show you the status and when the green line is gone and this little field here has has left you'll know that it's done so I'm going to click empty field or uh, I'm going to select all just because I only have 13 here and it's a test so you can see here that the um, status bar is going to start moving across there all of them are done and you can see that um, at least in the the view that I've got here, the um, the name showed up. So I'm gonna open the first one. Okay, we looked at this a while ago, and there was no information in there. Now we can at least see that um, we've got some information in there. Uh, the email address or the contact information's in there. You can see it was able to gather the you know what was in the QTH data. Now I don't know why someone decided to put this information in the QTH data, that's not what belongs there, but that's what came back in QRZ data, so we can't do anything about that. <clears throat> so let's let's look at an, another one. Um, here you've got one, and um, the reason why I'm flipping through these is that some of them don't have 
CQ or ITU zone data. The reason for that is is that there was no that data didn't exist in the uh, in the lookup data. So um, it's not going to bring it back as well as the locator. If the grid's not in there, it's it's not in the lookup data. It's not going to fill it. So here's one where it actually had that kind of information in the source. So you can see that it filled the the zones. Um, it even filled the lat long um, because that data was in there. And because of that, you can see that the locator, the grids up here. So um, pretty powerful feature. A lot of people use it when they um, import logs from other programs. It's worth noting, though, that if you're using a contest program, most of them can broadcast their data and Logbook can gather this up automatically so you don't have to import it. Look in our manual under the QSO forwarding um, feature and you'll be able to figure out how to set that up. So that's pretty much it. Um, real simple, but real powerful, and we hope you like it. Thanks, and 73 is from Mike, WA9PIE.